Welcome to this week's installment of the Two Minute Drill with Nichols football head coach Dale Olmstead. It's kind of a different feeling for us this week. This is the first time Nichols has had two wins since the 2009 season. Dale, let's talk about the win, a 16-13 triumph over Becker. Yeah, no, it was um, you know one of our goals coming into uh, you know the, uh, the season is to go above 500 with our non-league opponents, and uh, and this was that you know make a break game with one on one. It's our last non-conference game versus Becker, coming off of a 17 to 10 win over MIT, uh, and really kind of controlled the whole game versus MIT. So we knew they were a good football team. They played their one loss was to Fitchburg State. Uh, 27 20. Um, so we knew where we'd be in for a battle, and that's what we got. It was it came down to the wire, um, you know, a, basically a seven minute drive for us to hold the win and, and keep it. So again, it was a, it was a great effort. We're very excited, um, and you know, we're looking forward to you know the next game. Let's touch on two things from the game. The first, the opening play from Skimmage on offense, the 80 yard touchdown pass, and then we'll talk about the defensive efforts holding them to just 13 points. So uh, Luke Vanikowski's done a great job. You know, he came in wanting to be the offensive coordinator since Dave left, and you know, me having offensive coordinator experience in high school, and you know, I kind of wanted to have that, you know, be sort of my, you know, my thing here as well. And uh, but Luke's done a great job. He's been very motivated. You know, has put in a lot of the offense um, since since you know Coach Kaiser's left, and um, and then in practicing the first couple weeks, you know, we've always we've been practicing that play, you know, a trick play, and I'm like, you know, Luke. It's you know, we practice it. We, we got to do it. And, you know, do it, do it early. Um, and he agreed. And, you know, he wanted to run at the first play. And and, uh, and I think it kind of set the tone. I think it kind of got them off guard and, and, you know, made them realize that they're going to be in for a war. Um, yeah, it was great. Great play. Chris Mullins has been a fantastic player for us. Great pickup. Uh, Massey is improved from his freshman year to his sophomore year. He's had a great season. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of key players were involved in that play. And, uh, you know, very excited about, you know, everyone involved. And just the defense holding them down to 13 points. Yeah, again, the defense had another great performance. Um, you know, they had, you know, Becker went in the fourth quarter, went and took the lead uh, 13 to 10. Um, and, and, you know, we ended up coming back, having a nice drive and scoring to get the lead 16-13. And then they had to come back and hold them. And then they, I think they held, held them to a three and out. We were able to get the ball back and they never got the ball back, Becker. So um, it was a great defensive stance. They've been playing tough, sort of a bend but don't break. I mean, they moved, they were able to move the ball, but they couldn't score. And uh, that's a compliment to Coach Sullivan and his staff and, and those defensive players have been playing pretty tough. Coach, we spoke before the interview about the emotion that came out after the game. And to the outside, it may look a little silly to see a nice bath on a head coach after a second win. But talk about what it meant um, for the program just to pick up that second win and for a lot of these kids that have been here a couple years and haven't had that, that type of luck. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I've been coaching now for 25-plus years. I've never seen a coach get an ice bath after the third game of the season. Um, but you know what? The emotions for us during those last 16 seconds when we knew we iced it, it was overwhelming for everybody, including myself. Um, you know, Brian Camacho was a senior, was a captain for the first game. Uh, his previous three seasons, they were they didn't win a game his freshman year, won last year, won the year before. So he only had two wins coming into the season. And to get two out of the first three this year, you know, meant a lot for all the seniors that were involved in this rebuilding process. And, you know, I don't know if the freshmen quite got it, but, you know, I certainly did. And, and uh, you know, I just overcame with emotions. Everybody, it was, it was unbelievable. I hope, uh, you know, probably from a, from a spectator might not know what's going on, but anybody involved in that program, I was very thankful for those guys to give me that memory. Um, I'm glad I was able to help these guys achieve some goals. Again, it's early on. I've been a part of programs that the regular season was just simply a formality into the playoffs. But for us, when you're rebuilding a program, you know, these games are very special. And, uh, you know, and if you can't enjoy them, then you probably shouldn't be playing. And, as, and again, I'm, I'm very thankful to have this opportunity here. I'm glad that the kids enjoyed it, and I hope the alumni and faculty and everybody involved with Nichols football was able to enjoy that day. Now we go from that, we turn to the Murderer's Row. First up this week is Endicott, followed by Western New England and Salve, three of the top teams in the conference. But let's talk about this weekend's game against Endicott and what do you guys expect? Uh, well, you know, Endicott is a great football program. They're on three, uh, but that does not certainly reflect what kind of program they are. They, as you said, you know, Murderers were all the first three games. All three of the next comp contests that we're playing all receive first place votes in the league. Uh, and the reason why they did that is because they're all good ball clubs. 
Um, you know, Kevin and his staff and their program, you know, they're looking to, you know, win championships. And the best way that they think they can do that is going out and playing the best teams in the Northeast. And they've done that. They played Hobart, St. Lawrence, and uh, Framingham State, which is the top school in New England. So, you know, they went out there and um, they played the tough competition. They didn't get the victory, but they, they battled. And some of the scores do not reflect the way they played. Um, you know, they were very tight going into the fourth quarter in some of those football games. And, uh, you know, very good program. Um, again, one of the top in the league. And, you know, we do have quite a long stretch here coming up with three tough opponents. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we're a little bit different team. You know, I just said it before, you know, now all of a sudden we're coming in here at, you know, 2-1, and one, not 1-2 one and two or 0-3. Oh so, you know, we're pretty excited about the opportunity to, to face one of our league top opponents this week in, at Endicott. Their homecoming is going to be a great atmosphere. And I look forward to the challenge, and I know our kids do as well. Fans, if you can't make it up to Beverly, NicholsAthletics.com has live stats and video for the game. Coach, good luck this week. All right, thank you.